we can see those fast boats. We weren't kidding when we said they were fast. While it does take about 30 minutes for the main recovery vessel to make its way over to the capsule, these fast boats uh, will be doing a couple of things simultaneously. A couple of them are going to be working to retrieve the parachutes that you see in the background there of this drone shot. Those parachutes will be retrieved from the ocean surface. We want to make sure we uh, we are able to pull those out. The recovery vessel there closest to the spacecraft is going to be performing some safety checks. We can see there they're using an instrument that is basically working to detect if there are any hypergolic vapors or fumes that are still residing in uh, and or around the Draco thruster nozzles or, or outlets. Uh, the hypergolic fuel, which is necessary for on-orbit uh, on-orbit burns to con to maneuver the the spacecraft, unfortunately, those hypergolics are. Um, are, are unable to be breathed. They, they are toxic. And so this team here is doing those initial safety checks to make sure that it is safe for the rest of the recovery team to approach the spacecraft. They're also checking to make sure that any residuals from the, the pyros are, are safe and um, are not going to cause any issues. We can see the team working their way around the spacecraft to do these, um, event, basically these, these sniff tests on all of those Draco thrusters. And as we continue to await the recovery of our Dragon spacecraft with NASA astronauts Nick Haig, Sonny Williams, Butch Wilmore, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov inside, Dragon has continuously, uh, already rather, uh, autonomously completed several steps to safe itself following splashdown. We are continuing to see uh, Dragon in what is known as stable one configuration. That's kind of the ideal uh, configuration following splashdown. It's upright um, and the, the Dragon capsule is in the right configuration for it to be hoisted into the recovery vessel Megan, which you do see a little ways off in your screen approaching. Dragon will continue to remain live on air with you through that recovery process all the way through the point where uh, the crew is extracted from the Dragon spacecraft. Now, if you are just joining us, the mission has gone smoothly so far. Dragon successfully splashed down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida at 2.57 p.m. Pacific, 5.57 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon. Approximately 17 hours prior to splashdown, Dragon autonomously undocked from the International Space Station, completed a series of departure burns, jettisoned its trunk section, and performed its final burn, the deorbit burn. This placed the Dragon spacecraft on a trajectory toward Tallahassee, Florida. Dragon successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, followed by deployment of its parachutes to slow the spacecraft down to a gentle splashdown. We're now going to follow the... Freedom, hypergol sweeps and unfired ordnance checks are nominal. Rigging is in progress. Approximately 25 minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC with SpaceX flight surgeon. And so what we did just hear there was communications that those hypergol checks uh, were complete. They didn't find any of that upon those checks, so we'll continue to move through the timeline. Next up is a process called rigging, uh, which you see happening right now on your screen. This is when a SpaceX recovery personnel actually works to um, climb aboard the capsule and work through procedures ahead of lifting um, onto the nest um, of the recovery vessel, Megan. We heard it's going to be about 25 minutes or so until that um, lift lift actually takes place. Okay, Freedom, the next call will be from the SpaceX flight surgeon on Dragon at Ground Private. Understand. 
Paulette's there indicating that the crew will have the opportunity to do a quick check-in with the SpaceX flight surgeon. This is standard procedure for every Dragon spacecraft uh, when it returns to the when it returns to Earth. Um, it's just an initial check-in, make sure everybody is doing okay. They will uh, also have another check-in with the with the flight surgeon once they are on board that recovery vessel uh, that you see there in the background. We can now see that SpaceX recovery uh, recovery team uh, member uh, there on top of the Dragon spacecraft. They are going to be working to install plugs in the Draco thrusters to ensure that none of those uh, um, and to ensure that no more uh, hypergolic fumes or vapors uh, come out from the spacecraft. They'll also place harnessing around the spacecraft that are required in order to lift it out of the water. As, go ahead, Sandra. Continuing to get some views of the recovery personnel, uh, both the main, the main recovery vessel, Megan, as well as some of those fast boats that we've discussed previously. It looks like just a beautiful day there out off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Um, weather was pristine. We were able to get undocked from the International Space Station as expected at 10.05 p.m. Pacific time yesterday evening. And Crew Dragon has since completed um, steps ahead of its splashdown at 2.57 p.m. Pacific, and we're now stepping through procedures to get Dragon hoisted up onto the Megan recovery vessel and get the crew extracted out of the spacecraft. And you did see uh, some of the parachutes that were um, near the, the spacecraft. Upon detection of landing, Dragon automatically releases those main parachutes to prevent wind from pulling the spacecraft. Dragon then auto automatically safes any pyrotechnics that may still be present on the vehicle and may automatically perform additional minor system reconfigurations. The astronauts will remain seated and in their suits at this point, but the onboard air conditioning keeps things temperature controlled inside the spacecraft so the crew remains comfortable and the communication systems. Freedom, SpaceX, com check. SpaceX, this is Freedom. Yeah, loud and clear. Copy that, Freedom. Have you loud and clear as well, and Dragon to Ground is no longer private. Understand, thank you. As we saw there on the screen, we have a couple of fast boats uh, in the recovery fleet that have quickly moved into the splashdown location. They are being followed by one of the main recovery vessels, which will move into position upwind of the spacecraft. The two fast boats have very specific roles. <laughs> Excuse me. The first approach is focused on immediate safety inspection, as we saw. They do this um, for spacecraft integrity and checking for any presence of those hypergolic propellant vapors. And this ensures that it is safe for the recovery vessel to approach Dragon. Once Dragon is cleared for full approach, as we heard is the case today, the team begins rigging the spacecraft for water recovery by the recovery ship. The second fast boat is responsible for parachute recovery and also serves as a redundant boat to the first one that makes the initial approach to the Dragon spacecraft. As we saw um, a little bit earlier, we were also able to see one of the recovery team members get on a jet ski to help gather up the parachutes that were automatically detached from the Dragon, from the Dragon spacecraft upon splashdown. And it will take a little over 10 minutes for the recovery crew to complete their safety checks. Once they uh, complete the team, we'll begin preparing Dragon to be lifted. And as, as you uh, see, they, they are preparing for that to take place at this point. Um, as part of the preparation for this lift, one member of the recovery team has climbed on top of the spacecraft already so they can attach Dragon's hoist rings and connect to the lifting lines. It will take us less than an hour to raise Dragon to the recovery boat and remove the crew from the spacecraft. After medical checkouts, the crew will return to land within four hours by helicopter. And if no additional medical assistance is needed, the crew will board a waiting NASA plane and depart for Houston.
And as we continue to await uh, Dragon to be hoisted up onto the ship, we have a very special treat. NASA Public Affairs Officer Jaden Jenning, who is actually on the recovery vessel and had a bird's eye view of the splashdown today. Jaden, how are you? How was the view from the recovery vessel? Hi, Sandra. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear, Jaden. It's so great to hear you. 